Okay. Um, so my name is uh, Yuval, Yuval Moore, and I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders for Beyond Verbal Communication. Um, I want to start with a little story. A few weeks ago, a good friend of mine calls me up, say, hey, I have tickets to this uh, great basketball game. Do you want to join me? And of course, being a fan, I said, sure, I'm out the door. And right when I'm at the door, my wife kind of calls me and say, hey, so where are you going? I said, I'm going with my good friend, uh, John, to see a basketball, bas basketball game. So, and she asked, so, and I say, why is everything okay? And she said, you go ahead, have fun with your friends, no, no problem. Now, how many of you have come across situations similar to that? Hey, I can see by the smile that it does happen to some of you. And what we can see is that the voice is a very powerful communication tool. It can communicate what we feel and our thoughts, and we can help it to convey ideas. But the voice carries inside information, information that is much more like beyond the verbal content. And actually, research shows that the emotions that are projected through the voice carries a lot of information and gives a lot more impression than sometimes just the, the actual words. What we have in Beyond Verbal is a platform that can detect and analyze and quantify emotions out of people's voice. That's, uh, that's what we do. Um, we believe, I think uh, those of you that have seen the presentation of uh, near uh, earlier, emotions are really a very important engagement tool. And what we are enabling is to be able to quantify, to detect emotions. These can be applicable in really a wider variety of use cases, starting from cases like communication between people, things like call center or market research, we'll talk about this later. Um, areas like giving machines, devices, IOTs, the ability to detect and give more information than just the, just the words. And areas like quantified self where we want to get more information about ourselves. So this is the, uh, the, the key areas, things like now the voice of the customer gets a whole different meaning when you're talking about actually listening to the voice and the emotions. Things like you should listen to your body, to what your body is telling you. These are the, the areas that we are active in. Thank you for the opening. It's a great way to understand some of the company. Uh, I'm Nadav. I'm uh, at Google now. But in, my, in, in, in the past, I was also a researcher at the lab at MIT where one of the things we were working on uh, around the lab is around connecting emotions and behavior into the real world, into our digital life. So I'm very excited to see this coming out, you know, these kinds of technologies as consumer products and as production you know, in, into the real world. So I'm very excited about the work you guys are doing. And, and speaking of getting it into the real world, you mentioned uh, several tracks that it could be useful from quantified itself to Internet of Things. Um, you're, you're a startup right now. Where are you focusing or how are you approaching all the potential of this kind of technology? Um, so like my, the colleague that was here before, there is always this challenge as a startup, especially when you are providing a platform, where do you want to, uh, to focus? This whole area that is called now emotions analytics that include technologies like ours, but also other technologies like uh, being able to detect emotion through the, the face, something that started a lot in, in MIT, and sentiment analysis and um, hand gestures and so on. And this is really an area that is emerging and we see a lot of pull from the industry, from companies that are approaching us to see how they can use this type of technology. We are focused right now out of the, the three area, mostly in two of them. One is the human-to-human -human communications. So, for example, we are working with the call center um, application with uh, one of the, the largest uh, U.S. Uh, carriers. Uh, and there we can provide a lot of uh, insight areas like market, uh, like market research. The other area that we are focused on is giving the ability to devices 
to be able to understand humans beyond just the actual uh, word. So the whole idea of that, it's not just what you say, but how you say it and improving the communication between these devices and us as users is, uh, these are the two areas that we are focused on. I believe that the quantify itself is a continuum. It will, uh, it will come further down the road. So, but I guess uh, when you are thinking of deploying in the world, I mean, they're very different cultures. People, some people are more vocal, some from, you know, some obscure countries, very vocal and loud. Other countries might be, you know, more, more uh, moderate in the way they speak. Uh, how does your technology go across different cultures, let's say? Yeah, I'm wondering when you're talking about countries that are more expressive, is it related to the fact that this is a convention out of Israel? But uh, so, uh, so this is a very important uh, uh, question. And interestingly enough, the research shows, the research that is available out there, that emotions, when they are being expressed, they are being expressed in a universal uh, way. So one example that uh, I can give is that if you are looking at a movie that is being played in a foreign language that you don't understand and there are no subtitles, we as humans are able to capture the emotions that are going on on the, on the screen between the, the heroes in the movie without really understanding the words. So we won't understand all the nuances, but definitely the, the emotions. Um, and when this very cold-blooded uh, Swedish guy uh, is expressing emotions, he is expressing anger, he is expressing it in a very similar way to... Uh, Great. So um, I guess this is a very unique area to start a company around, and it's probably interesting to me and maybe to the others. Uh, how did this start? Where is the origin story of, of your company? Uh, so the company started by a, a professor uh, over 20 years ago, um, and he really developed it uh, over the years. We at Beyond Verbal we exist for three years. Uh, we acquired the technology. And what he had in mind when he started the company was looking at how babies communicate with, uh, with their parents. And if you think about the communication that happens very early on when there is no, uh, the babies cannot see, definitely cannot uh, uh, understand words, there is still something going on between the parents and the babies which makes the babies understand, feel what their parents are projecting. Anxiousness, relax, love, uh, anger, and the babies react to this. So he started with trying to understand what's going on in the air between people. And the other example of the university, the university of this uh, uh, of this technology is the fact that even if the baby is being adopted from one country to the other, still this understanding exists between the babies and the, and the parents, so it doesn't matter where, where they are coming from. That, that's great. So, so it's universal and it's based on very grounded research, starting from very basic humans with the and things in and children. Our, in our database, we have over a million and a half voice samples from over 160 countries representing over 40 languages, and we see that the results are very similar between the different, uh, the different languages. Maybe you can, tell, you can tell us more a bit about those samples, or how do you get them? Do you already have uh, users or deployments out there? Um, so we have um, applications out there. We have partners that are using our cloud-based service um, using an API. So we collect voice samples anonymously, of course, uh, from a variety of, of sources. Um, and then we, like I mentioned before, we have over a million and a half uh, voice samples right now. And it's growing by the thousand uh, every week. Um, so this is, and of course, the existing customers. That we have. So I guess, I guess this is my last question, because I think our time is getting to be over. Um, once this is stable and everywhere, how do you see the world when this technology is sort of embedded everywhere? What is the ideal situation that you imagine? Um, so we envision a world where all the devices around us um, can really understand not just what we say, but how we say it. Uh, so our car would be able to tell how we feel and maybe adjust the music. Our smart home would be able to tell what's our mood right now. 
Uh, this could be a great helping tool for people, for example, on the autistic spectrum that can understand very clearly the words but don't understand the, the meaning behind the, uh, behind the words. Advertisement can actually be much more customized to the mood that we are in right now, humanoid robots and so on. All the way to uh, measuring our wellness so seeing how we are doing and also with specific medical conditions like stress or depression, some work that we are doing with some hospitals in the US about being able to detect things like congestive heart failure. So the voice is a great carrier of information. Uh, so we just see a situation where you know, a few years from now, I don't know if it's two or three years, people would not be able to call their phones smartphones if they will not understand people's emotion, and this is where we are. Thank you, this is exciting. I personally can't wait for the day when there's an app that can tell me what my wife actually means. And when, she tell, yeah, when she tells me, okay, you can do whatever you want. So my wife tells me that if I need an app to understand how she really feels, I'm in bad shape anyway. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.